Hello, Internet! My name is Catherine Barsanistas, and you are watching The Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis, a cooking show where I make recipes inspired by various uh, tabletop role-playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Shadowrun, and today's episode, um, which is inspired by Pugmire by the Onyx Path Publishing. Uh, Pugmire is a game very much like D&D, except that, well, have you ever heard of Dungeons and Doggos? It's kind of a similar concept, I mean, except you're kind of anthrop anthropomorphic dogs or cats. Uh, the whole idea behind Pugmire is that it takes place in a medieval type setting, uh, I want to say thousands of years after the apocalypse, where humans were basically wiped out, leaving their house pets. Uh, their house pets evolved into bipedal um, creature, well, bipedal whatevers of their own, you know, species, and started their own civilization. So, um, yeah, Pugmire, you have a bunch of dogs. You're, you play a dog in sort of a medieval fantasy setting. So, um, yes, yeah, so you can check out uh, Pugmire at the Onyx Paths website, or I can't remember exactly what Pugmire's website, just Google it. I mean, seriously, just Google it. So, I am cooking today what I'm calling Hunter's Haven Hot Pot. Hunter's Haven is a... Um, Sorry, it is a tavern usually frequented, frequented by rangers in Pugmire, which is the main city in the Pugmire role-playing game setting. So I was trying to figure out what kind of tavern food would be served at the Hunter's Haven. And also another thing I had to keep in mind is these aren't humans, these are dogs. So what kind of medieval style tavern food can a dog eat? Uh, with the dog's physiology. So hopefully, I mean, I wouldn't completely recommend eating this with your dog, but you totally can share this dish with your dog as long as you leave out uh, certain ingredients, which I will tell you uh, throughout the episode. So we're gonna be making uh, a carrot ginger stew with smoked turkey, as well as garbanzo beans. All of these ingredients should be fine for dogs to eat and you to eat, so we're gonna be doing that in the pressure cooker in a little bit. I'm also gonna be working on another blog post recipe tonight because I need to do that, and I figure I can shoot both of these after the episode's done. I'm, and oddly enough and funnily enough, this particular recipe I'm gonna be working on is based off the episode, sorry, based off the anime Beastars, which is another sort story type place with anthropomorphic animals and one particular episode, or in the manga as well, uh, the wolf character, Lagashi, eats a giant bowl of yakisoba. Once again, gonna have to try to make yakisoba so where a wolf can eat it. So, that I don't completely recommend feeding to your dog as well, but it's the idea that counts, right? Right? Especially considering I have to make it uh, just about completely vegetarian, with the exception to the fried egg that it's on top. So, I'm gonna quit rambling and get to cooking because I'm pretty sure that you're sick of hearing me just ramble, even though I will continue to do so. I know, I'm being so helpful right now, but first, I'm still kind of out of it and dead from, you know, plague. So, I don't have it, but my God, this week, I've been all sorts of emotional, up, down, and exploding, sort of. It's everything I can do to keep myself from screaming right now. So, um, yeah, I live in Georgia, so that should be kind of your, your first clue as to why I'm about to scream my head off. But, I will discuss that a little bit later. Time for booze! So, um, first I'm just gonna fill my mug with some ice which you will not, you will hear, but not actually see me doing because it's off camera. Oh, we got some stuff in the chat here. Let's see, Chip to Bernie. Hello, I'm new here and I'll be happy to join you. Oh, hello, it is uh, nice to meet you, Chip to Bernie and Kamaragi. Uh, can I, I have no idea what that is. Okay, so I got some ice. Next up, I'm gonna get some gin. Gin, 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 gin. Calm my nerves. So, gin, and another thing of gin. I'm just gonna switch my prep cam so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just kinda cover up the ice I've got in there with gin. Next up, because I am crassy AF, 
I need to incorporate my mixers. So for that, I'm gonna be using some black cherry drink mix and ginger ale. I know, I am doing such classy cocktail stuff. Georgia, that's where my old friend is living in now. Yes, I am in the metro Atlanta area, a um, little bit north of it, still within metro Atlanta. And yeah, as you probably heard the nonsense going on with our dumb as hell governor, who obviously wants all the poor people killed. Um, yeah, you've, you've read the news or seen the news or screamed at the news. I know I have. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna fill that up with ginger ale. The nice thing about the carbonation is that it mixes all of that delicious black cherry stuff for me to make it all nice and fizzy and mix it all together and keep me from having to stir anything, which I don't feel like stirring anything right now, as you might imagine. So, considering this is uh, the first time I'm doing this recipe tonight, do bear with me, because I will be making adjustments as needed, and of course I will, if you are taking notes, I will also be listing off the changes I do make, which reminds me I need to grab a pen, put right here, and take a drink. So I will admit the thing I do like about the black cherry water flavoring is that um, it kind of makes stuff taste like a Capri Sun. Um, yeah, so we got this giant uh, 24 pack of Yingling from Costco. Um, let's see, hopefully not lagging too much. Um, but yeah, uh, I had this giant, um, what's it called, 24 pack of uh, Yingling beer from Costco and I admit I'm not the biggest fan of Yingling just because it's just kind of a bland beer to me however put a little squirt of those water flavorings in there and you got some tasty Capri Sun beer I know I'm going so gourmet I'm I'm tempted to kind of release a uh, set of posts called the plague diaries where I just cook up uh, recipes based off of what I happen to have in my pantry um, rather than just geeky stuff. Or maybe I can make it all zombie apocalypse themed. I'm writing my own story, guys. Um, right, so Pugmire and this recipe. So I wanted to go something that, especially since dogs are, I mean, they're not obligate carnivores like cats are, so they can actually eat various vegetables and fruit, but it really just depends on what those particular veggies and fruit are and how they're processed. There are certain things that are toxic to them. Onions being one of those things. And um, which I will tell you that um, even though the stew itself will not have any onions whatsoever in there, um, as part of the garnish, I'm going to be taking uh, Granny Smith apples and roasting them with a little bit of butter and chicken bouillon cubes inside of them. So it gets that kind of nice chickeny flavor and buttery and that's kind of a nice roast apple top. However, uh, most chicken bouillon cubes do have onion powder in them. So as well as garlic powder and both garlic and onion is toxic to dogs. So if you make, happen to make this and want to share this recipe with your four, uh, four legged friend, just leave the garnish off and you both should be fine. Uh, just keep the garnish for yourself. Garnishes are for humans and evolved dogs that happen to speak English and walk on their two hind legs and have evolved past the apocalypse in the next 10,000 years, which who knows at this point, I'm wondering if that's going to be the case. That's where we're all going to go. We're all just going to become, we're just going to all reincarnate into evolved dogs. Right. I am sounding absolutely nutty. This is what COVID's like. No, not COVID. This is what, ah, did I mention that I've gone nuts? Yeah. Mm. Right. So, yes, uh, chickpeas, dogs can have. Turkey, dogs can have. And also the idea behind this in the, in the game is that turkeys are, can, are usually considered a wild animal. Um, that, and they probably would be hunted by the dog hunter ranger characters. So that's why we're using it. Uh, it also gives that nice kind of smoked flavor. So I think you'll probably enjoy that. Carrots and, uh, Ooh. Ginger, right. 
I'm just gonna start prepping things because otherwise I'm just gonna start rambling and repeating myself. So first, we're going to do a bit of, of prep work because we're gonna need to cut up our carrots for our stew. So, oh, hello, Miss Armstrong. I evolve dogs, yes, woot. Um, yeah, today's recipe is based off of the RPG Pugmire, which I promise I will run on my channel at some point soon. I don't know when yet, and I need to find players to do that with me. I've also never DM'd a game before, so you can imagine I'm a little nervous about it. We're gonna do about, uh, I wanna say about four carrots, roughly about a pound of carrots for this stew. So that's about, eh, about five carrots. We're gonna do that. And just need to remove the tops and bottoms. And I'm going to save them for my compost. Because that's right, guys, I've got a vegetable garden now. Yay! I can actually have a use for compost. Yay! Where's the lid for this thing? Right. Because to be honest, I still need to make another bag of stock. Okay. I'll be a great DM. Oh, thank you. Um, I should probably just keep that all in the same thing first. Remove the tops and bottoms. Sounds dangerous. Giggity. Okay. Um, so yeah, just gonna be. Let's see, do we have enough? Okay, good. Now you can see what I'm doing. Just gonna cut this up into manageable hunks and split that. Because the truth of the matter is, once the stew is all made, is all cooked up, I'm gonna remove the turkey. And uh, while I am chopping that up and waiting for that to cool, I'm gonna be blending the remainder of the stew in, with uh, an immersion blender. That way to get it that nice kind of thick stew-like consistency. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that medieval dogs don't have blenders, but you know, work with me. They're probably just gonna take the giant potato masher and say, oh, this is the sacred masher of man. Because that's right, in this game, the dogs worship humans, or at least the memory of them. Human items are considered ancient artifacts and sometimes have magical powers. And for those who happen to have feline furry friends, there is actually an expansion to Pugmire called the Monarchies of Mao, where you can play as a kitty which I may totally do. Because, you know, my cats haven't been embarrassed enough on my stream. Goodness. So, durka 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 durka. But yes, for those who are joining us in Facebook and wonder um, how I know Miss Armstrong, uh, Brooke Armstrong, she is a player for the Dungeons and Dragons podcast, Audio Dungeon, which coincidentally enough, airs Wednesday evenings, 8.30 p.m. Um, on, uh, let's see, it's on Twitch as well on Facebook Live. Just look up the Audio Dungeon on Facebook and you can watch their uh, campaign. I got to be a guest on there back in February. I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. I got to play a tavern owner, a gladiator turned tavern owner. And, um, yeah, I want to go back. I will admit I'm re-listening and catching up on Audio Dungeon as of late because I, I really, really want to go back. Um, and, you know, I mean, it makes sense for my character just having met them to not knowing exactly what's going on. But, you know, being among the other NPCs for a while after that, she probably has some kind of idea. So yeah, once all this crap is over, I'm going back and I am going to bring food again. And this time I might actually bring my husband, maybe, possibly. Though I don't want to crowd the table. Um, but either way, I'm looking forward to when I can go travel again even though it's probably not gonna be for another year. Who knows, especially with the idiot governor I have down in Georgia. Um, let's 
see. No plane delays this time. Yes, agreed. And this time, <laughs> I'm making something that it doesn't take nearly as long to cook. I was thinking, oh, you know, a slow roasted thing. That'll be great. I mean, that way I can just, you know, have that in the oven and just let it go while I prepare everything else and prepare myself and all that sort of thing. And um, yeah, then my first flight was canceled. So I ended up having to get up at four in the morning the following morning. I spent the entire first day of my vacation in an airport, by the way. Um, so yeah, by the time like I managed to get on the new flight, get to my uh, Airbnb in Staten Island, get my ingredients, I had exactly the amount of time between cooking and getting a, um, what's it called, Uber or Lyft or something to the studio for the show. But so yeah, when I went in, I will admit I was on rushing on adrenaline and pretty much that's it. <laughs> adrenaline and root beer because I needed root beer for the recipe and root beer had caffeine in it. So I was running on nothing but adrenaline and root beer before getting to play for D&D &D in front of, you know, hundreds of people. No pressure. Um, this is what I do. And I had such a good time. And I will admit, I'm since that and the past few games I've been in, I have been missing gaming something fierce. Haven't really had a chance to play anything as of late. That's why I'm hoping to get a game started. Or got some friends who are looking at starting a fifth edition uh, campaign. But even then, see the airs are loading. I have to run, Madame. You have great show and see you shortly. You are marvelous. Thank you. Yay! Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully. I'm not having too many issues with my stream. Let's see here. Did I? Okay, good. Um, let's see, hopefully the lag isn't too bad for you guys. I might have to change settings before the next episode. But, uh, yes. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of doing a rough dice of my carrots here. And you see, I'm holding my knife like this to make sure that it stays stable. Because a big thing about doing knife cuts is making sure you have a stable platform as well as a stable grip. And it doesn't have to be that tight of a grip, you just have to um, hold it properly, which is index finger right up against the blade here, thumb, and then wrapping the rest of your fingers around the handle like so. And as you see, I've got a pretty relaxed grip on this, but if I try to push the knife and just give it a little bit of pressure, it doesn't go anywhere, as opposed to if I held it tightly like this, or even held it at all like this. Now this is a relaxed grip, not going anywhere. You see what I mean? And also make sure that your knives are sharp because dull knives are more likely to slip on you. So. Just gonna continue as such. And I think I should have, hmm, this is about Almost two cups of carrots, and I still have another two carrots to go after this one, so. So keep that in mind, about four to six carrots or a pound, whichever you want about a pound of carrots. I mean, honestly, considering they sell them in these one pound bags, you should be fine. So. Just going to keep cutting. <clears throat> and like I said earlier, we're going to be doing this in the pressure cooker. 
So that's also why I'm doing two recipes today. One for Munchies and Minis itself, the other one for the blog, which I am taking the chance to cook up while I'm waiting for my apples and stew to cook. Because once I get this in the pressure cooker and the apples and such in the, um, in the oven, which reminds me, I need to preheat that oven. Hmm. I will wait to do so when I get the um, pressure cooker um, going because once it stops cooking in that pressure cooker, I'm still going to have to release the steam. So as I explain my time management to you. Right. Um, okay. Just going to keep cutting. <clears throat> but yeah, I was actually going to do this recipe last week, but yeah, just worse and worse news. Um, but yeah, this is the one that my Patreon subscribers voted on. The other two options I gave them was for some spiced marmalade inspired by the Blue Rose RPG, which is also a fun RPG if you happen to like the works of Mercedes Lackey and Tamora Pierce, because it's very much in that kind of romantic high fantasy vein uh, with, you know, very character based sort of stories. Um, as well as a kind of a more political intrigue rather than, I want to say, tons and tons of monsters. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, I have the PDS for that. I'm really looking forward to playing that as well, especially with all of my Tamora Pierce fan friends. And uh, the other option I gave my Patreon subscribers is also off of uh, Dragon Magazine, uh, Dungeon Dragons Dragon Magazine, issue 418, the ends in an instant uh, issue. And I was thinking about trying to make a drow themed recipe. There's uh, one called crust sorry, crustacean broth with iron loaf. And that I would actually be doing a mix of two recipes, one of which is not mine. I would be giving the link to that because fun fact, um, pig's blood can be used as an egg, uh, as an egg replacement. And when I think, I hear the word iron loaf, I either think, you know, a bread that is so incredibly tough, it's like trying to, you know, gnaw on a piece of metal, which, uh, no. Um, or a bread that happens to be very high in iron. And since we were talking about the, the drow elves as well as the underdark here, I don't really think they would have as much access to eggs as they would blood. And also, you know, it's their drow. It seems very appropriate. So I did happen to find um, that blood, uh, blood bread is a Scandinavian recipe. It is a traditional Scandinavian recipe. Uh, so I happened to find a recipe for kind of a blood-based sort of hollow roll. So I was thinking that would be a really kind of nice uh, addition, sorry, um, to go along with some crab broth. And the whole idea is that I would make kind of a crab and mushroom stock, like boil some crab, make a stock with that and some mushrooms, like other underdark sort of materials, maybe some radishes, because we're talking about underground root vegetables. Yeah, I think that'll work pretty well. <clears throat> Straining them all out and then adding crab meat. I just told you the recipe, but I didn't actually create it yet. So you're going to have to wait for that. If my Patreon subscribers happen to vote on it, uh, I need to come up with some other options for them to vote on too, admittedly. And, um, as much as I love Dungeons and Dragons, I don't want to become a one trick pony. So if you happen to know of any uh, tabletop role-playing games that happen to feature food or you would like me to come up with a recipe inspired by, uh, comment below or uh, shoot me an email at thegluttonousgeek.gmail.com um, or 
uh, you know, comment on social media, send me a message through social media. I am open to ideas. So um, keep that in mind. So it looks like we get about uh, two cups of chopped carrots. That is our first thing. Then I need to prepare the other uh, thing for our recipe, which is our apples. And I am just... Actually, no, we don't need to do that. Because we need to get that stew going, and this actually delays the stew. So next up, I'm going to be needing to get some fresh rosemary into my mix. And see, so I've got about a quarter cup of fresh chopped rosemary, plus more for garnish. Keep that in mind. And I've got a giant rosemary bush in my front yard, as you can see, that has been going absolutely crazy. And if you're wondering, holy crap, where am I going to get that much rosemary in the store? You don't have to. Um, part of the reason why I have so much, and I even have more, is that depending on what kind of time tonight I have, um, depending on the yakisoba happens to be finished a lot earlier than I uh, intend to, um, I'm actually going to start making some bre rosemary bread for my friends. So we've got some, we've been going kind of stir crazy and have been resorting to various creative projects. And part of that is that I, I really miss having my friends over especially for kind of last minute fire pits. And I, I mean, I do love to feed them when they come over. However, that's not entirely possible right now because plague. So since I have an abundance of rosemary, I was going to make some rosemary bread for them as well as also, I'm just going to pack that in there just give them each like a, gi a giant bushel of fresh rosemary to use in their own cooking. So I figure that's a nice little thing to have come in. And also if I happen to have these things nearby, I was going to show you another thing that we're doing for our friends, but I don't happen to have any of the things I was talking about nearby. So I'm not going to worry about that for now, maybe a little bit later. So, kind of packed in all that fresh rosemary. I'm just going to take a little bit more. Hey babe, can you hand me a little uh, glass dish please? Well, this little handful here, that's just going to go into a glass dish for some garnishes on top of the bowls later. The rest of this I'm going to chop up for my dish. So I'll load that on there and just chop that up. It's okay, go ahead, get water, it's fine. Okay. And I think that's all of the chopping I need to do before actually getting the pressure cooker out. Which reminds me, uh, babe, when you can, can you uh, get the pressure cooker out of the pantry for me, please? Thank you. Okay. And um, see, so yeah, I also need to measure out, I need to measure out a couple of things for this to work. So it looks like ginger and rosemary need to go together. So I'm just gonna grab a little small bowl to put those in. gonna grab fresh rosemary also is gonna do about how much ginger yep, quarter cup of ginger paste ideally you would mince your own ginger but the grocery store I had nearby did not have any fresh ginger so ginger paste it is it also saves you a little bit time on prep so there you go and just so I don't have that all sticking later on, I'm just going to give my measuring cup a quick spritz of cooking spray so it doesn't all stick to the sides once I'm done measuring. I think 
I think that's the entire, almost the entirety of the container there. Not to worry, it's all gonna go in. So, and I also need two cups of garbanzo beans. So I think this package is about that much. Yep, quarter cup. Yep, this is exactly two cups of garbanzo beans, dried preferably. Garbanzo, i.e. chickpeas. And that is a, what's it called? 12 ounce package of garbanzos. So I don't even need to measure that out. Where'd my apple juice go? And we're also making this with apple juice. So let me move some stuff out of the way because we're actually gonna start cooking pretty much immediately. my garnish so that goes over here spices can go right here gonna save these rosemary stems for stock and maybe the carrots too I haven't decided whether that's gonna go into the compost or, uh, or not yet Just move my turkey legs over here and this doesn't mean we're done with prep this just means you need to see what I'm doing so once I get this thing to a point where you don't need to see what I'm doing with the uh, pressure cooker, we will go back to our other things. So I've got an electric pressure cooker here. Oh, I'm sorely tempted to uh, see. There we go. To plug the sucker in. are you? Now notice how I'm using an electric one rather than a standard one and part of that is the standard ones scare the crap out of me. Also you it's possibly likely that you're more likely to have an instant pot than you are a manual pressure cooker and for good reason. Just google pressure cook, uh, cooker explosion you'll see why they scare the crap out of me. So First, uh, most of these pressure cookers have some kind of saute function, um, or see in this particular, yep, saute function. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lower the heat on that just a little bit because I don't need it that hot, and get that started. So I just need to heat up a drizzle of olive oil. in my pressure cooker. It is not hot yet, so it's heating up, I guess, and doing its, uh, eh, stop that crap. Start. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait for that to start heating up. In the meantime, I'm just gonna gather the rest of my ingredients, so it looks like I'm gonna need my kosher salt that went around here somewhere. Ah, it's over here. I'm also going to need my apple juice, wherever the heck it went. Ah, here we are. I will admit, me and my roommates have been sort of eyeing this apple juice for the past week as a mixer. This bourbon and apple cider just goes so well together. And also, it's dangerous to go grocery shopping right now. Oh my God. Mm. Let's see, are we hot yet? Nope, barely warm. Right, so while we're waiting for that to heat up, it's time to get measuring. So I'm going to need about three cups of apple juice and three cups of water. We can start with three cups of apple juice. All right. Here. And a big thing that to keep in mind if you happen to be sharing this recipe with your dog, don't use anything that is sweetened with xylitol. It is toxic to your dog. It will hurt them. Do not hurt your dog. And yes, I know, I said it, 
if you're sharing this recipe with your dog. So, dogs can eat people food too. Yes, I'm weird. I mean, I don't have a dog. I have three cats and one cat and one of them thinks he's a dog, but that doesn't really quite count. Okay. It smells like it is starting to get warm enough. So I just need to pour in my carrots. And kind of stir cook that to coat it. Let's I can do this. And stir cook about eight to ten minutes. So while that is doing its thing. Need to add first a pinch of salt. And I'm just going to move this slightly to the side here. So we can focus on some other things. But first, I decided this is going to be my compost, so, or at least thing to put scraps in for compost. So, yeah, fell on the floor, it'll be fine. Right. So, like I said, another thing that we are currently working on is some yakisoba inspired by Bee Stars. So since, like I said, it is a blog post, that means you're going to be seeing me taking pictures. You're getting kind of a behind the scenes sort of tour, I suppose, right now of the crap I do here on the Gluttonous Geek. Not only do I stream, well, I actually started with the blog. So sometimes I kind of have to combine the timing on them. And tonight is one of those times. I know, no pressure. So that also means I have to take some photos. I am so organized. Give that another stir. We don't need to go that high, or do we? We shall see. Yep, I'm gonna have to go higher. <clears throat> That's fine though. All right. Just lower that some. Yeah, I've got a Canon Rebel T6i here. It's a crop sensor camera, and I just have the kit lens I do for progress shots. Well, the main photos I do after I finish preparing each recipe is with my Tamron 28-70 f2.8 lens. So yeah, I've got a camera here, which means I also need to get the things I'm going to photograph out. So, in this particular case, we're gonna be working with a massive carrot. I know, giggity. Red bell pepper. Multitasking. It's a thing. And uh, where are you, my shiitake mushrooms? Here we are. So, 
some shiitakes. And some Thai basil, which hopefully I have some that's still fresh looking. Ah, here we are. There we are. Okay. So, ingredient shot. Let's just get you on auto and turn off my flash. Yeah, already took the cap off. Hello, Overwatch Joel. How are you doing tonight? And this is when I realized that my battery is not actually in my camera. Ooh, have I told, mentioned that there's a pandemic going on and my brain's a little nutty? Okay. Cool. And let's make sure that flash is off. There we go. Just kind of pull that in a little bit. Um, and I will admit, the part about doing blogging I probably like the least are the progress photos. Just because it feels like the camera just gets in the way. And it does. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's what it does. Hmm, those carrots are smelling lovely. But you know, it has to be done. So, right, and then for the sauce, Time for the carrots sauce. I have a mix of, oh, I forgot the Napa cabbage. Well, it wasn't gonna fit in the frame anyway. Um, let's see, let's move these mushrooms. I am so organized, let me tell you. So since I'm doing this recipe based off of the manga and anime beast stars, I have to end up making a yakisoba sauce that is vegetarian. And the crazy thing about yakisoba sauce is that traditionally it's made with two main ingredients as, it's, as the base for it, and that is Worcester sauce and oyster sauce. I happen to find Kikkoman vegetarian oyster sauce, which is in fact um, soy sauce, uh, soybean based. And then there's Worcestershire sauce. Um, this is the reason why I don't say that it is safe for to eat, have your dog help you eat uh, your yakisoba. Because even though, yes, in the anime, Lagoshi is a wolf, um, the majority of yakisoba sauce is based off of not actual Worcestershire sauce. Most Worcestershire sauce is based off of, um, off of fish. It is a fish-based sauce. Uh, the stuff that yakisoba sauce is made out of, however, is bulldog worcester sauce, which is actually a fruit and vegetable based worcester sauce. Entirely vegetarian. So, something to keep in mind. And so, we need, what did I have in? Mirin, rice vinegar, ketchup, or soy sauce. We'll figure that out as we go. But I need to get back to our stew because our eight minutes is up on our carrots. So let's just move back to that. That is looking good. So next up, we just need to add, and forgive me for the mess here, I don't have access to a printer anymore because I'm not in my office. Uh, let's see here, the ginger, rosemary, and a pinch or two of kosher salt. Yes, timer, I hear you, shut up. Okay, so that rosemary and ginger I was showing you earlier, that just goes directly in. And we're just going to, ah, not do that for one. Just gonna stir that in. 
add a pinch of kosher salt and cook that for about a minute with another drizzle at timer not cooking cook that for a minute with another drizzle of where the hell's my olive oil ah here we are so there we go That is smelling fantastic. Mm. Okay. Cool. All right. So to that, after about that minute or so, we're going to be adding our apple juice water as well as the dried beans and smoked turkey leg for this recipe. So. Almost done, about 15 seconds left. Just gotta continue to stir cook that. And open this up. Like I said, 12 ounce, pack 12 ounce package of dried chickpeas. It's exactly two cups, so don't even need to measure that. Just pour that in. Give that a stir. Turn off the timer because it's being loud and obnoxious. Another little drizzle of olive oil, as well as a pinch of salt. And then I'm just going to pour in my apple juice. And then I'm going to need three cups of water. There we go. Pour that in. And then we're going to add a single smoked turkey leg. Now I just need to figure out which one is more photogenic for the photo later, so you can't really see that. Uh, kind of like the look of this one better. Besides this one, the skin, majority of the skin is already off. How's it smelling? So that one's a bit more fragrant. We'll use this one because even though we are taking the skin off before we chop up the meat, there's still a lot of that flavor infused into the skin that we want infused into our stew. So that's in there. And then get that a quick stir that out of the way. Find my lid and switch our cameras here. So where are you? Got our lid. I'm gonna make sure that the valve is closed as well as making sure that it's on correctly. So there we go. And closing that. And now I'm just going to Stop the saute function, turn it to high pressure cooking, and then put the timer on for about 45 minutes, which the timer itself will not even start until this has come to pressure. So um, we're going to let that do its thing. And in the meantime, we're going to prep the other part of this dish, which is those roast apples with butter and chicken bouillon. So I'm just going to move this out of the way to a safe spot while it decides to cook. And decides, by the word decide, I mean yes. Appliances can be temperamental. Okay, bud. You are sitting right there. What are you doing? Doesn't like being moved. So. I have one of the nicer pressure cookers, which means it's a little bit more temperamental on how its functions work. But yeah, there we go, 45 minutes. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. 
And like I said, now it's time to prep the other part of our dish. So, I'm gonna cover that up for now. So like I said, we got some work to do. So first, what I need to do is preheat my oven to about 350 degrees. Which, trust me, it's gonna take about, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay. Oh, I think I know why. It's because I didn't start press start. Come on. Now let's see if it works this time. Yes, it's working this time. Oh, right. Brain is now kind of working. Oh. So back to our prep board. So next I've got four Granny, four small Granny Smith apples. On the toi. Cat. First, you're gonna take off those stickers, obviously. I know. That one's already gone. So is that one. Okay. Next up, you are going to want whew, your knife. You're just gonna cut off the bottom as well as the top of that. Next, you, I actually recommend doing, getting an apple core for this you don't want to go all the way down. You just want to go down enough to haul out some of it, even though I went all the way through. Mm. We'll try doing a knife or spoon the next time. The thing is, you want it to lay flat. Do a spoon this time. Or a melon baller if you happen to have one. There we are. And if you've ever seen roasted Vidalia onions like this, it's kind of the same concept. You know what, screw it. This is my recipe. It's not ideal, but you know, if it's too difficult, you're not gonna do it. So I would rather you, that it's not, it not be absolutely perfect, but actually prepared, <laughs> as opposed to absolutely prepared, like absolutely perfect, and then scaring off everyone who's trying to make it. None of that. None of that nonsense. This is gonna go in the compost. Yeah. Okay. Apple core. Oh. I realize that putting apple seeds in a compost might not be the most ideal thing. Unless I pulverize it first. I'll figure it out. Okay. And... There we go. We're gonna go right here. Cool. So, next, you're gonna need about four tablespoons of butter. Two, 
three, four. So about a half stick. As well as either two large or four small chicken bullion cubes. Good way to know which one you have is that if one cube's enough for two cups of broth, you have a large. If it's for one cup of broth, you have a small. Good. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. So, I'm just gonna put that into tablespoons. do that to the remainder of our apples. So cut that into cubes. Stick that in and seal it off. Last one. all this trash. I'm just going to wrap this up in foil. Where are you? Ah, here we are. Okay. Good. My microphone's still working. Just going to... There's one. Stuffing apples. I've never seen that. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm uh, stuffing apples with butter and uh, chicken bouillon cubes. Like, if you've ever made uh, roast, um, roast medallion onions, it's. 
might be a little too little for it. Eh, it'll work. Yeah, you can do this with butter, beef bouillon cubes, and a Vidalia onion, but since this recipe is based off of the role-playing game uh, Pugmire, where you basically play as a bunch of anthrop anthropomorphic dogs in the medieval fantasy setting, which I know that sounds so cool, right? Um, I wanted to kind of make a RPG sort of inspired dish that you can share with your dog. Yeah, I know I'm weird. It's okay to judge me, I guess, because I know I'm weird. And I don't care what you think. I don't know. Of course I care what you think. I've got anxiety. Ooh. But right, I'm just gonna now stick this into a baking dish. Fit all of them. Will that fit all of them? Well, my oven's preheated. Oh yeah, this will fit them. Maybe, possibly. Ha ha! It fits them. Woot! Okay, so now that my uh, uh, apples are stuffed with butter and chicken bouillon cubes, I'm gonna stick this in the oven. Uh, preheated 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. So. 45 and let that do its thing that, okay I need to change a song because that sounds too much like static oh wait no that's not the music that's my pressure cooker <gasps> okay uh, just so you can see what I'm dealing with here let's kind of show you what's going on. Got steam coming that, out of that, which means it's doing its thing. So no, that wasn't the music. That was my pressure cooker. It is making that noise as it's coming to pressure. It shouldn't be making that noise. Okay. It was a little loose, I think. Yeah. Just had to tighten that up some. Okay, cool. Right, we are doing things. We are working on yakisoba. Yes. Now that I finally have the things in the things, because that's the thing about this recipe. Uh, once you get into the pressure cooker in the oven, there's not really much else to do um, beyond what comes after that 45 minutes that both of those things cook. So I'm actually gonna be working on another recipe tonight based off of the anime Beastars uh, for uh, some yakisoba. So, just let's flip to my other notes. So far I haven't changed anything from what I wrote yet. Okay, here we are, Lagashi's late night yakisoba. Okay, so, right. I didn't completely, but uh, let's go ahead and get some notes down. So, one large carrot, shiitake mushrooms, one medium, cut in strips, and so let's go ahead and do some, uh, some prep here. So, I just first need to slice up my red pepper. Oh, the pressure cooker is at pressure, so now it's just going to take about 45 minutes to cook. So, over here, and this can go into the compost. Okay. So I just need to first cut this into strips. I'm gonna do about half inch thick strips here. And I'm gonna make them a little bit more bite sized. So cut those in half. And see, when do the peppers go in? Um, did I actually pepper and carrot go first? So let's get them in a prep bowl with each other.
And like I said, I'm, this is going to be kind of a, what's it called, kind of an experiment in progress. So this, the published recipe, will be up on the blog, while my Munchies and Minis recipes are only available by watching the videos or being a member of my Patreon community or supporting me on Ko-Fi when that particular recipe seems is posted that week, which you will know from the blog. But this, this will be on the blog itself. I admittedly am doing this. It's kind of some bonus content. Okay, so we got our red pepper. And then you're gonna need either one massive or two to three medium-sized carrots. This happens to be a massive carrot. So, because the carrots at H Mart are massive. Yes, I know it looks wrong. So sue me. Please don't sue me. Okay. That means I can also start cleaning up some of the stuff I don't need anymore, like that chicken bouillon as well as the ginger paste. I don't think I'm, I am not using that in my Akasoba recipe. So that can go into the fridge. A yeah, big thing as you're cooking, clean as you go. So the carrot I need to cut into kind of matchstick sizes, about two inch long, but very stupid thin. So. So how do you get matchstick uh, thin pieces of carrot? Planking, my dear, planking. So you kind of want to cut it as thin as you want it. So this is gonna be about, oh, I wanna say that's about a quarter inch thick. I know we went half inch on those, oh, what's it called, on the peppers, but they're also not as hearty as carrots and cook up a lot faster when cut into quarter of an inch thicknesses as opposed to carrots do. So this should equal out as I'm, and as you see, I got some flat planks all about roughly quarter of an inch thickness. So then you just cut matchsticks. And just so you can kind of see the process there. I'm also going to need to um, get that in the shot because as I said this is a blog blog recipe so that means I need to take photos of the progress. So okay. And this also helps my followers be able to see kind of what the step-by-step -step process is, which is why I staged the pictures like, like this. Because I don't want them having to look up cutting tutorials every single time. So, now that picture's taken, let's go ahead and get back to work. So, my little matchsticks. Again, 
Gotta make my planks. those seeds off my blade so it doesn't make the knife slip. We just have two giant hunks of carrot left that we need to plank and cut. Not perfect, but it'll, it'll do. And this last bit, it's not going to be... Actually, I'm just going to stick this last bit into the compost. It'll go to good use. My plants will eat it. Just so I have a uniform thickness on this remain, uh, remaining carrot. We got 34 minutes left on the apples. And the carrot is all sliced. I'm not going to need these massive ones until later, so I'm just going to put them back in the fridge. All right. Next up, we have more of our veggies, which we're going to be using uh, shiitake mushrooms and Napa cabbage. Let's see quarter inch matchsticks and half inch strips on the bell pepper. Okay. Mm. Compost. All right. And the basil I'm actually gonna hold off until it is closer to production time because the thing is with uh, any kind of basil is that when the cell structures are damaged as such they tend to turn black and get wilty. Um, granted it still for the most part tastes the same. I mean this stuff hasn't gone completely wilty yet but it's not pretty like, like a do you do. I mean it's not ideal but it works. Okay, so next up I need my Napa cabbage and shiitake mushrooms. Um, let's see. Okay, so the cabbage goes in separately and so does the mushrooms. So they're gonna need their own bowls. So let's just get them their own bowls. Yeah, get back here. What did you get stuck on? And this is what happens when all of your lids fall off your pull out. There you go. Okay, so 
bowl for cabbage. I'm just gonna put this to the side so I have some more room before I get this massive, massive nap of cabbage out. Now, ideally, most grocery stores are not gonna have them this large. They're gonna be significantly smaller. So, we're gonna use you for compost. You're gonna need about four of those massive, like two to four of those massive leaves. Now granted, when you get a Napa cabbage at the grocery store, you're probably gonna get a significantly smaller one. I just happen to have a Korean supermarket nearby where I live because I'm in the Atlanta area. Let's see, did I accidentally turn my mic off? Good, I didn't. Um, so that's why this thing is so freaking huge. Uh, more ideally, it's about probably half the size, and you're probably going to use about half of that cabbage or um, the whole darn thing, depending on the size, especially if it's a baby Napa cabbage. But we're going to use about four leaves of this. So one, two. Eh. Get over here. Three. And four. These things are actually quite hardy. So you are going to go back in your bag. And think about what you've done. that back in the fridge but yeah I there's also like I said baby Napa cabbage which is about this big which you probably would just use the whole thing for Actually, I kind of like the look at that but it's got a lot of holes in it okay still fine to use though but for this, we're going to go with the little hardier one, especially since we're going to be stir frying this at such high heat. So, where was I? Right. Cabbage. So, yeah. Just going to need to take a quick pic of this for my blog. Like you do. And oh gosh, stay classy, Dunwoody. Neighbors have decided that it is a good time to be setting off fireworks, like you do. Okay. Okay, cabbage. So this we're just gonna be kind of chopping up into squares. But first, I'm gonna split this in half. And then into kind of inch, inch and a half wide strips. And then just gonna chop that up. are seriously lighting fireworks right now. Oh boy. Yeah, that's going to scare the neighborhood chickens. All right. Big thing of cabbage into the bowl. Next up, shiitake mushrooms. Which I'm going to do about remove the stems there. Slice those in half. Keep the ends for compost. And then I'm just going to 
kind of cut these into a little bit larger than half inch thick pieces. Half inch, about an inch, because the picture as well as the frame of the, um, what's it called? Of the anime and manga that shows this recipe has pieces that could be onions, but they're from a meat flavor and amino acid standpoint, it's more likely to be shiitake mushrooms. And they're kind of squarish. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to get a picture. About one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, let's do about six. I'm in the mood for mushrooms. And the nice thing about shiitake mushrooms is that they kind of have this sort of meaty flavor, flat out umami. of that cut up. Four two six shiitake mushrooms. Four leaves of Napa cabbage. Okay. And you see it can be quarters or thirds um, each half, depending on how large the mushroom cap is. I mean, generally you want stuff to kind of be roughly around the same size. So yeah, there we go. So actually, I'm going to get a picture of all three of those veggie bowls kind of together to get a kind of interesting, colorful visual. There we go. There we go. That looks cool. Okay, so just gonna stack those up and set them aside. And let's see, I was definitely gonna need some fresh chopped basil, but let's see, I also need to gather my other ingredients. That's right, I need to make my afasoba sauce. And so I admit that I kind of had to write notes on this, but I haven't actually solidified it yet. So we're going to try something and then taste and adjust as needed. 
for it. So, okay. I put down, okay. I'm gonna need equal parts of rice vinegar and ketchup or mirin. This warrants some experimentation. Let's get my hoisin as well as my ketchup. Let's see. Eh, they're fine to use. Okay. Whew. I have not eaten dinner yet. Mm. Let's see, I've got 24 minutes left on the stew and 20 minutes left on the apples. Mm. All right, let's make some sauce. So, I think We're gonna try with tablespoons. We're gonna first attempt with tablespoons. Cool. So, first, obviously, I'm gonna need a bowl. A mixing bowl of some kind. Oh, right. We will use We'll use you. All right. So first, I am seeing I have an option between mirin and rice vinegar. So what do I do to be able to figure out which one I like better? I taste it. Mirin. Mm. Liking that so far. And then I've got the rice vinegar. Mm. One is significantly sweeter than the other. But the only things I haven't really tried before is the Bulldog Worcester sauce and the vegetarian oyster sauce. So, I am going to determine which one to use based off of how it goes with what I just tasted. Oh my God, who the hell is setting off fireworks on a freaking Thursday, Wednesday night? People in quarantine, that's who. God, I hope it's not because they're celebrating about the state getting reopened. That's right, guys, I'm in Georgia right now. So, you can imagine that I have been furious for the past uh, 48 hours. Oh, that is lovely. And that's with the rice vinegar. Okay, <coughs> just went down the wrong tube. <coughs> oh God. <coughs> right. Well, the sweetness and smokiness <coughs> of the vegetarian oyster sauce works well with the rice vinegar. <coughs> mm. Oh, sorry, I'm okay. The mirin I think is gonna be a little too sweet considering what I'm also gonna be including. But first, I need to test out this Worcester sauce. So. Mm. Okay. Yeah. We're using rice vinegar. If 
vegetarian. That Worcestershire oyster sauce. Oh, it's like the Worcestershire sauce. Let's get the restrictor back on there. Oh, it's already on there. And I think let's add a little hoisin to sweeten it up. As well, pretty much every yakisoba sauce recipe uses ketchup. So we're going to be using some organic ketchup because that's what I have. It's not like I have to, it's not like I go all organic all the time, but I do have uh, friends and my roommate uh, are both, well, they're all, I have people with allergies to certain preservatives. Allergies and sensitivities towards preservatives. So, um, a lot of times when I am serving people who are coming over to visit, I err on the side of caution and go with organic. Especially um, when my poor friend, uh, one of my poor friends is, um, not poor friend, one of my friends has an allergy to uh, pota uh, what's it called? potassium metabisulfate, which is often used in ketchup, mustard, and a lot of other condiments as a um, what's it called? As a preservative. Yeah. I mean, if he gets any in the system, he's going to the hospital. Okay. So we are starting, right, with a tablespoon as our unit of measurement to go off of. So that means I'm going to need about equal measurements of ketchup and rice vinegar. So one and one. And let's see. I'm gonna need from the oyster sauce double of that. So I'm gonna need oh goodness four tablespoons of oyster sauce. One two, three, and four. And then about eight tablespoons of that Bulldog Worcester sauce. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And next up, I'm going to use a teaspoon to figure out my two taste items. Give that a stir. About 16, 13 minutes left. I'm just gonna give the bowl I have a rinse. By the way, this is a good way to be able to test your sauces without contaminating your sauce or using a billion tasting spoons. So, just gonna drop some in there. Mmm. That is lovely. It's nice and tangy. However, I do think it does need a little bit of sweetness. So I'm going to add about two teaspoons of hoisin. Let's go one and two. Yeah. 
Right. Let me go in there. Give that a stir. That is magical. I like that. So, okay. We have our yakisoba sauce made up. So I'm just gonna get a quick pick with all the things I used. So, kinda. Some weird uh, color balance going, but I can fix that later. Okay, how's that looking? Oh yeah, that looks fine. Okay, cool. So, got that mixed up. So this is a good time to start cleaning. Clear out my workspace some, as well as kind of prep for the next step. Since I've got about 15 minutes left before I need to release the steam on that pressure cooker. 10 minutes left on the apples before I take them out of the oven. Oh, so. Oh, they're smelling lovely. So, yeah. All the various Asian sauces. Oh, boy. And, you know, ketchup. play Tetris with my fridge. Okay. Oh, I should have used those last two shiitake mushrooms. Well, they'll go in something. See the apple juice, you can go in the fridge. Oh, right, I need eggs. As well as my yakisoba noodles. Now, when you get this at the store, they come in packages of three noodles, uh, three packages of noodles per pack. So this recipe makes about three portions of yakisoba. Let's see, do I have room over there to put my sauce? I do now. Let's see. Are you recycle bowl? No, you're not. Okay, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Don't need this. Derp, 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 derp. Tasting bowl. Do I need that? No. Oof. I'm not kidding about that uh, Tetris. Between Tetris of the dishwasher and Tetris of the fridge, I should be a Tetris master by now. So much to the point where I've got carabou the Karabushpa. Karabushka playing in my head at all times. And you're going to Carol what, huh? Karabushka is the song, also known as the Tetris theme. How do I happen to know that particular tidbit of trivia? Well, I used to be a Renaissance Festival musician, so um, that was actually one of our songs. It is a folk song, and that was one of the songs that we were playing at the front gate each morning, which, by the way, the Georgia Renaissance Festival has been delayed to October this year. Last weekend would have been its first weekend. I am sad, but I am grateful that they are taking their workers' safety into account. Even though I am a little worried for my friends who work as booth workers who work both the Carolina and Georgia show, which now we're going to be happening at the same time. 
I'm sure they'll figure something out. I hope they figure something out for their sakes. Um, let's see, what can I get out of the way? I need you for turkey. Or do I? Where did I cut the mushrooms? I cut them on that side. So we're going to be using this side and cleaning the knife for turkey. And if you're wondering why, well, my roommate is also allergic to mushrooms. So since I know that she's going to be eating the stew as well, I want to make sure that I do not contaminate this delicious stew with my blog post recipes allergens. So yeah, I'm just gonna wash my knife. Yeah, another thing you will get used to if you cook for your friends a lot is learning and kind of keeping sort of an internal Rolodex of all your friends' various food allergies. And my God, please, if you cook something for a party, label it. Label it with ingredients that might be out, like with the main ingredients. Or if you know that it happens to be gluten-free, put gluten-free on it. Because, yeah, got plenty of friends with celiac as well. Oh. Okay. I'm realizing this is too large for my compost bit. Well, just put that there for now. And right, and why am I getting this out? Oh wait. I realize that I don't want turkey juices going all over the place. So I'm gonna be getting another cutting board out. One it's not nearly as flexible. We'll use you. Got eight minutes left. T minus eight minutes. But in the meantime, I'm going to be getting some Thai basil out, which I realize the majority of it's going to go into my compost pile. But the stuff that I can throw into the stir fry itself doesn't necessarily have to look pretty. That's wilty, I can't use that, can't use that. So. We're gonna do, that's about a quarter cup, I think. I think I'm gonna go more for a whole or half cup. Let's go for, let's go for a half cup. And that can go in compost, just like the majority of the rest of this. Okay, that's roughly about a half cup. Oh, my neighbors are really pissing me off right now. But unfortunately, we still only have about 10 minutes left till quiet hours. So. We are. It smells amazing. So I'm just gonna bundle this up into tight of a bun as tight of a bundle as I can possibly manage. And then slice this into ribbons. Get a rough chop over that. And half of this is going to go in with the mushrooms. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that handful and stick it into my bowl of mushrooms. Nice thing about doing the whole multi bowl uh, sort of prep is that you can keep everything sort of together. 
and just put it all on the pan at once when you're stir frying it. Yeah. Remainder of the basil, this is gonna be garnish. So. There we go. Just clearing that off. So I don't have any basil allergies in my household. be the apples coming out soon. Yeah, about five minutes left on my stew. And this goes in the compost. Oh boy. Hmm. Still haven't finished my drink yet. Okay. Oh, apples, apples, apples. Let's uh, put that on the stove top to cool for now until I have a space for it. Where is my pot holder? That's one of them, but I need ones that cover hands entirely. Oven mitts, that's the word. Okay, shut that one off. Ooh. That smells fantastic. Oh goodness. Right, so that's gonna need some time to cool off. You can see right there that's still simmering. Uh, however, um, I prep a space for it to sit. So I'm just gonna move that there. So I am gonna have to slice those apples too once they've had a chance to cool down. Just stick that there. Four minutes left on my pressure cooker. I wonder if I can make pesto. Oh, this would be a nice garnish. I'm just gonna get this left of these green leaves. Might be able to make kind of a Thai basil pesto or something. I should freeze the remainder of the leaves. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I don't need it to look pretty, I just need it to work. Oh boy, so freezer bag. And since I have time, like I said, might as well strip the remaining, remaining leaves and... Ooh, I just had a thought of what would go really well in a Thai basil pesto. Kind of a mix of, I wanna say peanuts and cashews, especially if you mix Ooh, if you use coconut milk. Hmm. That might be a little over the top, but maybe some lemongrass would be really good. Some green chili. I think I just invented a curry. Um, I think I might be doing a little bit of experiments, this, uh, a little experimentation this weekend on the remaining Thai basil, which is good for me because one of the plants that I put in my vegetable garden is Thai basil and if it grows anything like the Thai basil I got um, what's it in the little aeropod gardens that we had in hy uh, little hydraulic uh, that's hydraulic um, hydroponic herb garden thing we have it's gonna propagate or just grow like a weed and if I'm able to gather the excess and make a very interesting kind of curry paste with it um, then I'm gonna be very happy because then I just I will admit one of my biggest pet peeves is waste I cannot stand waste and 
because it took me so long to get around to making this recipe. I'm a little sad that I don't have more like bright green leaves for the visual effect, but considering that the majority of the, this Thai basil is all still good. Um, I mean, I know I talked about doing kind of a plague diary sort of post. I think this might be what I mean by that. Like, here I have all these things from when I went to the Korean grocery store. And they sell everything in bulk. Okay, so that is my um, stew. So I'm just going to stop that. And, whoo. Oof. Let that... Release the pressure. You're going to be hearing that for a little while. So while we're waiting for that to release and cool, I am going to keep doing this. Admittedly, it's a lot easier for me to continue working when I have a clean workspace. And this giant mountain of Thai basil is keeping me from having a clean workspace. So let's just go ahead and take care of it while I have it out. So how are we doing on... Let me check the other batteries on my... There still aren't really completely charged yet. Okay, well, I think I'm doing okay on battery so far. I've got about two bars left. Though I also know that with this particular microphone system, that means absolutely nothing. So we'll see. We will see what happens with that. Okay. I think the rest of you can go in the compost. Actually, I think I might wait to make that curry paste until I start doing pruning on the Thai basil plant. So yeah, here we are. But it's just gonna sit in the freezer. Yeah. And get that excess air out. Mark the bag. I mean, worse comes to worse, I can also use it to make lemonade. I mean, that's what I do with my pineapple sage. go into the freezer. Ooh, smelling like turkey and happiness in here right now. Okay. I'm gonna need a larger compost container. Well let's let's use you got a lid that works, right? Right? <laughs> we shall see. Eh, I wrestle with the Tupperware drawer. Where are you, Mr. Lid? Okay. It'll do. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Okay. 
Okay, you are recyclable. So you're wondering, what are you gonna do with that other turkey leg? Well, um, yeah, I'm going to freeze it and hold on to it for when I make this again. Hmm. The bone itself I can use for stock. I already have a stock bag uh, figured out for that. And it's just still going, isn't it? Um, where's that lid? Here we are. my compost box for now. Now I need to get a proper compost bin at some point. Right. Just waiting and waiting and waiting. Let's uh And just for the sake of this recipe, I'm going to be um, finishing up the stew first before I continue with the yakisoba. That way I can also uh, cut um, the video so it happens to uh, gather everything in. Hello, Victoria, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Thank you for rating the last bit of uh, munchies and minis. Well, no, it's not last, but we're still working on stuff. So today, um, for everyone who's just joining, uh, Today's recipe, I'm making a smoked turkey stew that you can possibly even share with your dog. Um, yes, looking at you, Victoria. Um, based off of the tabletop role-playing game Pugmire, a game where you play as basically anthropomorphic dogs in, in a medieval fantasy society, and it's supposed to be um, like a, thousands of years after humans have died in an apocalypse, but the dogs and cats have evolved to be bipedal and intelligent creatures that build civilizations. Um, yes, so that's um, the one thing I'm making. The other thing I'm continuing to make as my pressure cooker still releases is um, yakisoba inspired by the anime slash manga Beastars. Um, so yeah, kind of a vegetarian yakisoba uh, with shiitake mushrooms and fried egg. So yeah, I was wanting to um, finish up the, what's it called, the stew before I stir fried everything into a photographable mess. Um, I'm sure you also understand that, Victoria, because um, Lord knows us food bloggers, okay, my pressure cooker is finally, finally done. Is it? Is it? Mother, okay, okay, come on, ha-ha, yes, I have done the thing, okay, next up I need to get that smoked turkey leg out of there with a piece, uh, pair of tongs, because next I have to remove all the tasty meat, uh, goodness, from that turkey leg, so first I'm just going to remove that skin, I mean, feel free to keep it for stock later on, but we're not really especially gonna need it. Put that back in there. And as you see, it kind of, I mean, while I could cut it off, it kind of just sort of comes off itself, but I am gonna need to chop it up still. But just trying to peel that skin off of there so we don't have that floating around too much in our stew. So, there we go. It's still very hot. But yeah, I was kind of going for ingredients that, you know, being in a medieval society of dogs, you wouldn't Dogs would not be eating stuff that's toxic to them. I mean, they may be evolved, but I don't think they're evolved enough yet to 
not be poisoned by onions. So I did a carrot and ginger, carrot, ginger, and chickpea base stew with a smoked turkey leg, as you can see. I'm just gonna peel that off there. Because I figure um, the pub that I'm basing it off of is called the Hunter's Haven. Just supposed to be, you know, haven for hunters and rangers and that sort of thing. So it makes stuff, sense that they would have stuff that uh, they would have hunted and then preserved. Make sure to pick all the little bones out of there too. Yeah. And I see why I also stewed in there, not only to get that nice kind of smoked hickory flavor, but also to make extracting the meat off of this so much easier. Because bones are no bueno. But yeah, I also did uh, rosemary and what else? Yeah, that's the main stew. And, oh, apple juice. Make sure that your apple juice is not sweetened with xylitol because that is also toxic to dogs. And for garnish, which is more appropriate for humans to eat rather than dogs, I took Granny Smith apples, hollowed them out, and put butter and a chicken bouillon cube into each one uh, to kind of have sort of a roasted stewed apple for a garnish as well as some fresh rosemary to put on top uh, once this is all done. Um, but yeah, once I get the meat pulled and chopped, we can blend the contents of the pot so it's kind of a nice, hearty, rich stew. Which I will show you in a second. That is probably not good to use. And let's see, any more meat? I'm just gonna pull that off. And I'm just keeping the bone and skin and all that because I'm gonna put that into my stock bag. Where I have a bunch of other chicken thigh bones and all that, veggie scraps. So yeah, there's our meat. So I'm just gonna give that a rough chop. It smells fantastic, by the way. It doesn't have to look all uniform and pretty because we're kind of going for sort of a rustic look here. All right. I'm just gonna... Goodness. To get that into a bowl. Yes. because there's other slicing I need to do, which you will see in just a second. So I'm start with one of these. Pour what's left of that little juice and whatnot, butter, into the pot. You don't have to. And that chicken bouillon cube is spent, I think, so I'm just gonna discard that. All right. So this half of an apple is going to be one of our garnishes to go along with our stew. I 
And yes, it's very hot. I'm in fact using my fingernails right now to hold it steady. Um, but like I said, we need to, I need to bring in, let's see, how I've been holding up with everything going on. I am, ooh. <laughs> uh, huh. oh. I'm for the most part doing okay. I did have a bit of a breakdown because I am, I am missing my independence, admittedly. Um, I am missing the ability to just have people over last minute. I'm missing going to the library and coffee shop when I feel like it, but the reason why this particular week has been incredibly hard has because, been because um, I live in Georgia. I'm in the Atlanta area. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, wait. Hopefully that is Hopefully that is um, charged up enough. I'm just gonna mute for a second because I need to blow my nose and you don't want to hear that. But yeah, our, um, our governor decided that with no basis whatsoever of uh, science, that he's going to call for certain businesses to be okay to open back up, like restaurants and movie theaters and bowling alleys and hairdressers. Um, despite the fact that we still haven't flattened the curve. And I will admit that one of my coping mechanisms has been ordering food. Um, because for one, I feel like I'm supporting my favorite restaurants, but also there's certain things that are more difficult for me to be able to make myself in great quantity or in at home. And now it's, it's dangerous for me to even do that because even if a place decides to stay is no dine-in there's no guarantee that my driver is not going to be dine-in there's no guarantee that the driver that that came in um like even if i do pick up like the drivers that come in haven't also been going to dine-in places um i also my roommate is also um has respiratory immune you know, um, issues, like she's had pneumonia and pleurisy before. So um, she technically is immunocompromised. Um, even though my husband and I, well, I've got the constitution of, well, 
I don't know, a god. For something that has no current immunity whatsoever, um, it's terrifying. I mean, I admit that I am lucky. My husband is lucky. Though, we're at the point that if his um, the VP of his company wants to open the office back up, we're basically going to be on the phone with the president going, no. Just, we can't. No. Um, and the president of the company, thank goodness, his wife is also um, very immunocompromised. So I imagine he will understand. He's the one who does have to say. But it's still... I am very worried about it for a lot of my friends who work in the service industry, among other things. Um, I am afraid for a lot of my friends who, well, I mean, yeah, the reason, and you've probably seen why, we're pretty sure the reason why he did this is that the state is out of money for unemployment and unfortunately also with the way that Georgia's constitution is amended it is written in Georgia's constitution to not raise taxes above six percent so um I still think he's a stupid shit but I'm pretty sure that they're basically just throwing every small business owner and every um, minority and person who works in the in uh, service industry just out to the wolves with this. So I'm sorry that this got all dark. Um, I'm glad that there. As you can see I'm just kind of blend that sucker. having an immersion blender is really nice by the way um, sorry to get really dark but uh, like I said I'm I'm lucky my roommate and husband are lucky I do have a friend on uh, North Georgia who is an ER nurse and he's oh he's in rough shape um, But we're, we're trying to basically be supportive where we can. Like, uh, for example, tomorrow I'm going to be making some ro loaves of rosemary, uh, rosemary bread to uh, bring to deliver to some friends. Uh, also, we've started, we're starting a project um, with our garden. So my husband has a 3D printer, and we decided the wall that we rebuilt around the garden looks a little bit like a kind of medieval castle wall a bit, so we're printing out a bunch of fairy doors and hobbit hole doors and all that, and the plan is we're going to give two to our uh, to each group of close friends, asking them to paint both of them, uh, one for them and one for us, and we'll set up their door uh, somewhere on our garden wall, um, kind of as a you're connected to our household like we kind of even though we're far away we still have a connection to each other so that's uh, our plan over the next few weeks and hopefully once this is all over we can have a big garden party or just a series of garden parties oh <laughs> ah. I know I shouldn't do that but okay cool that's about as blended up as I want to go right now. So, just gonna give that a quick rinse. And get my display bowl out. Where are you? Oh, right, I think I put you over here. Yeah. It's kind of going for sort of the. I have this giant soup bowl mug 
that kind of looks a little bit like a dog bowl, but still rustic without, you know, getting a dog bowl for the dog I don't have. Um, so yeah, just gonna ladle some stew. And by a little, I mean a lot. Honestly, this re recipe is enough to feed about eight people. Okay. Shove this out of the way. Ooh, it's hot. And then I'm just gonna find where the heck I put my tongs. Ah, here we are. Yep. Take some of that turkey. Spread that around a little bit. Yeah, the best recipes are the ones that have a lot of leftovers. And this is actually honestly enough soup to feed the three of us, I think, for a week. Just good. And then some apple slices. that three looks nice probably don't need to go the whole route especially since this one is just for the photo and then I've got my little bit of rosemary yeah kind of garnish that a little further there we go all right, and so there we go, our Hunter's Haven Hot Pot. So now that that is done, I can get onto my freaking yakisoba, because this is a two for tonight. Okay, cool. So let's move to garbage now. Um, mm. Any good cook knows, clean as you go. No, as you can tell, things be a little cray. 